So I just got done doing this trailer build here, and I'm going to do a quick walk around of what we got going on here and kind of the reasons why I did it and how to work this machine. Now, this is for a guy, for a gym teacher out of Dayton, Ohio. Um, he's getting ready to retire. Um, he had bought a lot of the, he had bought all the equipment. Um, the only thing I had to buy was a soap tank and the fittings and the piping and all that kind of stuff. So with that being said, I'm going to show you how everything works on this trailer and the way that we can, and then the reason why I do it, I'll go over how the comment pump works and how we can, how it works really good. And then I'll go over my downstream injection. Um, so this is some things that I'm going to walk around here with, and I will show you everything with this trailer. Again, I'm Jason Diamond here with PressureWatchHelp.com, here to help you grow your business, be successful, and to change your life. So, right here, we started with, um, again, I did not buy this hose. I probably would not recommend this hose. It is heavy, um, but it is three-quarter inch. Uh, I believe it's 150 feet, and it took up almost the whole reel. Coming out of my reel here, I got my swivel, and I have a three-quarter inch um, strainer here. This way it keeps all the crap from getting into my tank, getting into my Hudson Flow valve, and that. So from that three-quarter inch valve, I have my yellow line right here come up, and it's coming into a bulkhead fitting. In this bulkhead fitting here, underneath is a Hudson float valve. Under that Hudson float valve, this way, this tank can get almost 30 gallons of water. <clears throat> So from there, I'm kind of going how the system's actually working. So from there, we come out of the bottom of our tank and we come up here from our bottom of our tank and we come into the bottom of our pump. I actually took out the little, um, so this way, um, the, from the unloader valve, it's actually going back into the tank. This way we don't burn up our water, our tank. From here, we came out of here. I did give him two new um, downstream injectors. From the downstream injector, I come up here to a three-way valve. This way, we will make our valve last longer. So I got S for soap and W for water. So the one's going here, going into the, the water tank here. It's this bulkhead in here, going into the water fitting with a tube going all the way down to the bottom. I also got one here for my soap with a tube going all the way down to the bottom. So this way, you can come up. Turn it on water to rinse, put it back up on soap to um, make sure that we are soaping um, the house. From our downstream injector, it just comes right in here to my um, swivel here for my hose reel. Again, I did not buy the hose reel or the hose. He had already purchased that. Um, right here, I did get him a ball valve so that way he can shut off on and off. The other thing I did is coming out of my key here is I came over here. And I gave myself a dump valve for my water tank or an eye wash place. So this is the eye wash place here. So you can turn this on, turn it off, all that great stuff. So the next thing, let's see. So that's everything for my pressure washer and downstreamer. The next thing I'll go to is my comet pump over here. On my comet pump, we have here... This here is a way that we work this here. So what I did is, is I'll start with the intake. So what I did is, is I put one tube in the, the, the chemical tank and one tube in the water tank. And then I got two ball rooms. This way we can turn off the soap and we can turn on the water and that way we can clean that pump out. Um, that's the only time really we're gonna wanna turn that water on. If we turn that water on, and we leave it on and leave this running, it's going to fill up our dump tank or our soap tank. Because what happens is on these comet pumps is we have a pressure line that goes over to my reel and we have a return line. This big um, hose right here goes back into the tank. So whenever you are off of the gun, it's going to take it right back into this tank. So we've got to make sure that we're only using this to flush it, and then we shut this thing down so we don't put too much water in there. Um, as long as you got the gun open, it's fine. As soon as we let go of that gun, it's going to just start dumping that water in there. I did that so he can rinse out this pump 
and make the pump rinse down. Um, it does have a, a bulb or a valve here to shut it on and off. And the other thing is on these pumps, if you look here, we can increase our pressure right here. I believe you can see that. It has a pressure relief or to adjust that pressure. It actually has a gauge on here so that way we stay in the green. So it will pump up to about 200, 250, but you know, it's not to say that's what's going to come out the nozzle because we're going to have all the hose friction loss of that. Right here, we have a thing that says pressure and bypass. So we push this over into bypass or we can put it in pressure. When we start in this pump, if we leave this in pressure, it probably, and it's not primed, it probably will not prime this pump because it's trying to put air through that, that, that hose over there and it won't. So what we want to do is, is get it primed here and bypass and what you'll actually see that water come up and go. And the only time you really got to worry about this is if you run out of soap or something like that and you need to reprime it to get it going. So this is why you do that. And that way it's not, it's only got that much air to trap out of it. Then it's dumping it back in versus going through that big hose reel and all wrapped up and it probably will not do that. But again, this is pressure. This is bypass. We're going to put it in bypass whenever we're trying to get it up and running. Pressure is when we're going to want to clean out, put the hose on, all that kind of thing there. But again, this is the Comet pump. Um, we went with a 50-gallon soap tank and a 35-gallon water tank, and that is plenty for this 4-gallon-a-minute machine. This 4-gallon-a-minute machine is a direct drive, and it did pull, I mean, it pulled just like that, pulling from the water tank. No problems at all, none whatsoever. I mean, it pulled completely, and it went straight to pulling as soon as I, um, I had to release the air out of the hose so it would pull, but it pulled it no problem. The other thing I did is, is I put the new oil in the, in the pump. I changed the oil for him in here. I changed the plug. I changed the oil in the pump over here. So that way, he will be ready to go this spring and hammer down. So this is a basic pressure washing rig. Um, I will be here this morning to take it up, and we will. I may. I'll shoot a video with him, and that way you can see how excited he will be. So that is how I set this pressure rig up, and the reason why I did set it up that way. If you would like for individual videos of everything on here. You can go to pressurewashup.com slash training, and in my membership, I have everything detailed down and everything that you need to be able to build this trailer and how to do each individual hose, the whole nine yards. I take everything, and I do it individually. I, I make sure um, I don't pass, I don't cut out too much, because I want to make sure that if you have an issue of trying to put this stuff together, you'll be able to see it going together. Uh, that is the reason why I did it for, is just because I know a lot of people ask questions on that kind of thing. So I really wanna make sure that it is good and ready to go for you. So that way we'll be able to build your pressure washing rig. So again, thanks for watching. Go check out, you can also go check out this playlist right here about this trailer build.